First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. State of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for us to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs> Peace, peace. Back once again with Dr. Alain Bay. We're going to get into it tonight on nationality, birthright, and divine creed. Before we get into it, um, we definitely want to um, give a shout-out to this past weekend, the Summon of the Moors. It was an excellent affair for those who missed it. Make sure you all attend the next one. That's August the 17th, August the 17th, y'all, of this, coming, of this year. So make sure you all check us out. Also, before we get into it, we want to say remember the cruise. We got the United Washer Tour conference cruise coming up March the 20th through the 25th. All right, come on out and check, you know, check us out. You know, you're really going to enjoy yourself, we promise. You know, we're going down to Cozumel to the pyramids. Possibly get to check out another pyramid or so, you know, Chesanisa, um, Cabal, or either Tulum. These are the various... Um, Pyramid sites within that particular area So come on out And enjoy yourself If you've never been to the pyramids And you've never seen your ancestors Structures, dynamic structures Then you don't know what you're doing You're still just around the corner You know So you need to come on out and check this out You know and do some um, investigation You know and take some good pictures And take some good um, Camera shots As well as also camcorder or whatever you need to do. Make sure you are, you're there so you can get it in, all right? So um, let's get into tonight's topic. Um, before I get in, let me go to the phones and bring in my co-host for the night. That's Brother L. Brother L, are you here? Peace and love, God. How you doing? This all right, all right, all right. We, we back once again, Brother L. How you doing? Uh, doing great, brother. All I, right. I, I, sir. All right, well, we're going to get into nationality tonight, you know, and um, dealing with nationality, we know, according to the Black Law Dictionary, and if y'all don't have one, God forbid, because this is the wrong time not to be able to not know the law. You That's know, right. Um, you know, they get, they taking away and stripping you of all your liberties and all your rights, you know, even though, you know, your rights are something to which that is God-given, and they actually can't do that, but, I mean, these reptilians, you know, that you're messing with in these insectoids or whatever you want to refer to them as, this is what they are doing. You know, you can refer to them as the Illuminati. You can refer to them as the so-called elite. You can refer to them to whatever you want to refer to them as. Mm-hmm. They are the ones in which they are kicking our asses right now as far as 
uh, when it comes to trying to strip us of our uh, rights, you know. And so when we get into nationality, we know that that's the quality of character which um, arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or a state. Now, um, nationality also determines the political status of the individual, mm-hmm. you know, especially in reference to the alliance, you know. So, you know, when we look at that, we also know that nationality is also used as opposed to territoriality for the purpose of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. Now, that's the, that was the case for the so-called Jews. The Jews um, considered themselves a nation because they was a group of people who come together and had a political status, but at the time before, 19, um, before the 1940s, they had no land. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, they tried to go into Uganda, into Africa, and get portions of the lands, and the Africans kicked them out. And so they had to go uh, into the land of Canaan, which is now known as Israel, um, in order to set up, you know, um, around the, um, the town of Jerusalem, you know, in order to claim that portion. But we know that they was not originally there because these are um, people who actually converted into Judaism from out of Russia and attempted to mix themselves in with the Sephardic Jews or those from out of Spain and Portugal and um, who was the darker um, or the dark complected, you know, um, you know, um, Moorish Hebrews, you know, mm-hmm. and they had ties to the Ethiopians or the Coptic um, Hebrews, who was known as the Falashians, you know, um, from out of Africa, it was all the way across to the Limba um, people in West Africa, um, what is known as the um, so-called Twelve um, Tribes of Israel. Right. They uh, they attempted to plant themselves. And still the birthright, you know, within that particular area. And so we're talking about also the theft of birthright um, tonight also. So we know that nationality ties you back also to land. Even if you're a group of people, you want to have um, land because that is the determinative factor. Um, As a matter of fact, when we look up land, um, we know that's one of the things in which that, you know, all good moors um, need to know the definition of because, when we go into the various subjects, such as, like, for example, the word indigenous, according to Webster's seventh, um, I think it's the seventh New Collegiate Dictionary, it says about the indigenous people being produced or growing or living naturally within a particular region or environment. So I think, like, one of the synonyms is native. So the indigenous people and the word native or, you know, or looked at as as synonyms, you know. um, But when you go to the Black's Law Dictionary, 7th edition, and you look up natural person, it says specifically that a natural person is indigenous, a native, the original or um, natural inhabitant of a country, of or relating to birth or natural child. Right. Now, Now, we can say that we come from out of Africa, and we do have, um, the oldest evidence coming from out of Africa, which dates back to 2.8 billion years ago, if you get the book Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Creemore. However, however, um, before the continent to drift, we was already here within what is known as the Western Hemisphere. According also to the Forbidden Archaeology um, by Michael Creemore, The Hidden History of the Human Race, he states in there that 600 million years ago in Dorchester, Massachusetts, there was an expedition in which that took place, in which that um, they found these particular um, vessels, in which that was metallic vessels, in which they had exquisite writing on them, or carving on them, in which that dated back to 600 million years ago. Wow. Now, there had to be human people, intelligent beings, in which that produced that, because that means they were smelting metals at that particular time. Now, we know, according to what we was taught in geography class, whether you took geography class um, in science class as part of science class in your junior high or high school years or even in college, they tell us that the continental drift occurred between 200 and 250 million years ago. If we was already here 600 million years ago, then that means that we are the original inhabitants prior to the continental drift. And what Prophet Noble Dralee stated within um, within chapter 47 of the Holy Quran, chapter 7, is right and exact. Right on. 
out of the right. so-called Indians. Right, right, right. We are the so-called um, Native Americans or the so-called Indians, which, of course, we don't like to use those terms because they've been federalized now. Right. You know, um, however, originally the word Indian came or uh, derived from the word Indy or Indos, in which that meant um, dark complected and the people of God. It originally meant dark complected people of God. So Indy, you know, of course, when you look at the Indian people out of India, um, even they originally came from out of Africa, in which that was, um, and they was actually Kushites. That's why they have the mountains there, the mountainous region with the India known as the Indo-Kush Mountains. Because mm-hmm. they was the Indo-Kush people. Kush. All right? And the word Kush within Hebrew means dark complected. All right? Or what they refer to. All right, so they was dark complected people, you know. Now, even according to Herodotus, the so called first European um, Greek historian, all right, we, we would uh-huh. say he was a Greek historian. We can't say, you know, um, we'll use that. We can't say his complexion, you know, but we know that Socrates, Aristotle, you know, Euripides, we know all of them were people of what we now refer to as color, all right? Of course, that's a misnomer too, but, you know, we'll use it for the sake of saying that they was dark skin complected. They had melanin. They were right. melanin mm-hmm. people, all right? Um, we know that because the first so-called white or pale Europeans didn't come into Egypt and get initiated into the ancient mystery school until 305 B.C., or BCE, before the Christian era, all right? Now, the time in which that um, Socrates and Aristotle and Euripides and all of them was there was actually between 400 B.C. to 322 B.C. So they was there before the first so-called pale or white so-called Europeans came into that particular um, within the um, Karnak or Temple of Luxor in order to get initiated. So that means is that we've been miseducated. That means that these so-called Greeks in which that we have been calling within history was actually not Greeks. They was Minoan because the original Greeks were the Minoans. And if you don't believe me, go to J. Rogers' Sex and Race, Volume 1. And J. Rogers breaks that down exquisitely, you know, and he states that on the record, that it was the original Greeks were the Minoans, the original Romans were the Etruscans, all right, you can get another book called Man, God, and Civilization by John G. Jackson, all right, this is what people don't realize, so when we look at it, you know, when we look at the word negative itself, it says a natural born subject or citizen. Right? A citizen by birth. One who owes his domicile or citizenship to the fact that he was born within the country referred to. All right? Now, that means if we was here within the so called Americas. 600 million years ago, and this was way before the European even came on the planet. So he don't, so he really don't have the capability or the right in order to um, mm-hmm. state in records or in history or, you know, um, mm-hmm. about our heritage. You know, because as it always ends up, it becomes his story, which is nothing more than, a, as Napoleon would say, a lie agreed upon. Right. That's what it ends up being. Nothing more than a lie agree upon. Wow. So, as a nationality and as a natural people, you know, we need a national government. All right? And the national government is a government of the people, of a single state of nation, united as a community by what is the term the social compact, and possesses complete and perfect supremacy over persons and things. 
so as far as they can be made the lawful objects of civil government. A federal government is distinguished from a national government by it being the government of a community of independence and sovereign states united by compact. All right, so um, when we look at that, that was the one of the forms of government as having a nationality is a national government as natural people, you know. So when we look here um, and we um, check out the Black's Law Dictionary, and it states, um, I think it's the sixth edition on the um, bridge, and you read artificial persons, it says a person created and devised by human law for the purpose of society and government as distinguished from natural persons, a corporation Mm. Or corporations are examples of artificial persons, all right? An mm. artificial person or legal entity created by, under the authority of the laws of the state, as association of person created by statute as a legal entity. So, um, in this particular uh, federal government, this is what they have set up, is a bridge between natural persons who are actually indigenous, all right, as compared to artificial person, which is distinguished from natural person. You know, and they've done this purposely in order to hide the fact of not just denationalizing us, but also stripping us of our birthright. Right. Now, when mm-hmm. you go to the Inter-American Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, and you read the definition, it states that in this declaration, indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their territories by Europeans. Mm -hmm. And then it said, as well as peoples brought involuntarily to the New World who freed themselves and reestablished the culture from which they have been torn. So that means that even if you was here 600 million years ago, or you was in Africa since 2.8 2.8 billion years ago and still reside there, we are still the indigenous people of the planet Earth. So the debate between the RBGs um, just saying that they're Africans or the more saying that they're also not just African, but they're also here within the Americas, both of us are right and exact. Both of us are right and exact. There is no debate, you know, when it comes to the term indigenous people. All right, and that comes from the United Nations. All right, the only ones in which that is outside of the um, indigenous um, peoples' um, definition are the Europeans. Mm-hmm. And how you know this? Because in the first definition, it says in the Declaration, indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their territory by Europeans. So the European is not indigenous. Nowhere on the damn planet. No, sir. I didn't write this damn um, article at the United Nations. (laughs) It says, second, self-identification as indigenous or tribal shall be the fundamental criteria for determining the group from which the provision of this declaration applies. You have to self-identify yourself as being indigenous or tribal. All right? That's what it says, and I'm sorry. You know, when we look at the historical cases within um, the so-called United States, the ones brought before Article Three Court, before the United States Supreme Court, the only ones in which I see in which they had one land, you know, in which that have declared themselves as being Moors and not Indians on reservations, or the Washita. And that's Henry Turner versus the um, United States and the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, 1848 and 1850 um, lawsuits in which that the family won back 68,883 acres of land. So really, a lot of these groups, you know, are playing with this information, and they just branched out out of ego, Hmm. But as the information continue to be revealed They're going to have no choice but they have to come home Because all of them have to use Washington information In order to even um, give themselves some validity They're going to have no choice Right 
because they can't prove land tie. No, they cannot. And that is the um, equivalent um, for nationality. That's that's what nationality actually, in a sense, means. If in order to have a political status, you must have land. You know, so yes, sir. When we go down, we go to the Universal Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, or the United, oh, excuse me, the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. It says that everyone has the right. Article 15 says everyone has the right to a nationality. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality, nor denied the right to change his nationality. Now, Negro, Black, and Colored, or African American, is not a nationality. No. So we, you know, so. We never changed. We never changed it in that um, particular sense, but because we have used these words, you know, in this particular system in which that their whole premise is set up on depriving us of our human rights and denationalizing us over the last 100 years. If you go back over 100 years ago, 1900, we was calling ourselves Negroes. By 1930, we was calling ourselves colored, as in the Right. The Negro, um, 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 as in the, um, you know, Negro Association Advancement of Colored People, or the National, you know, <laughs> or the National uh-huh. Association <laughs> Advancement of Colored People. In other words, the NAACP. We were calling ourselves Colored People by 1930, and who 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 formed that? Who started that? Was the Boule? W. B. Du Bois. Who started exactly. the New York chapter of the Boule is the mm-hmm. one on which that popularized that. By exactly. nineteen mm-hmm. by nineteen sixty, um, black power became the thing, and the word black became um, dominant in which that we began using. You know, during the um, during that particular movement, and who popularized that was Kwame Ture, or known as Stokely Carmichael. By nineteen ninety, Jesse Jackson. Popularized another name for us In which they became known as African American In which they actually 18, well, By 1984 when he was running for Presidential candidate is when he started Using it but by 1990 It became um, Mainstream So within the last 100 years Name me any people on the planet earth Who have changed their names Four times No one not one and not and not only changed the names four times, but still doesn't have a nationality with either of those four names. Still doesn't. No. You know, you look up the word Negro in the Black Law Dictionary, and you will see what that means. Matter of fact, let's go to it. Let's go to the word Negro. Let's see how much power it has. You know, and we're talking about in law now, you know, you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself outside of law, but in law, you might want to use something else. That's right. So it says here, Negro, the word Negro means a black man, one descended from African race and does not commonly include a mulatto. Now, look, the word Negro, black man, and African, they got us all within one damn definition, hmm. meaning, mean, mean, meaning the same thing. So the word Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race. So why they got to keep changing the names? And then it says, does not commonly include a mulatto, which nowadays it does. Because now within the society, um, I know we grew up um, saying that one black, one drop of black blood means you black. That's right. So, you know, something must have changed. But the law of the different states for the uni- uh, are not uniform in this respect, and some including into the description Negro as one who has one eighth or more African blood. And then it says the term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is Negro. And that's race, and that's rights versus gun loom out of Mississippi. So not every person of color is a Negro. So Negro is a black man, Negro is an African, and Negro is colored, but not every person of color is Negro. Interesting. 
That is interesting. What do he mean by that? I mean, where is he going with that? Good See? question. Good question. I'm going to let that marinate, and hopefully by the time of the show, we can get some get some answers and questions going, and um, we're going to find out where they really going with it. All right? We go to Black Store Dictionary, and, the, and um, y'all understand that the Black Store Dictionary that y'all really need is the Deluxe 4th Edition. That's what you need, the Deluxe 4th Edition. All right? That's what you need. If you don't have it, get online, get one. Get one. All right? Mm-hmm. That's necessary. But let's look up black person. Let's see what that means. Black person. All right? When we look at the word black, all right, and then we look at the word person, we already know that within um, Black's Law Dictionary that it defines person as either a natural person or an artificial person. That's what it defines it as. So a person right. can be um, natural or it can be artificial, which is a corporation, a legal entity. Okay? In the Black Store Dictionary, it says black person. It says black person according in, occurring in constitution and law must be taken in its generic sense. All right? So that mm-hmm. means that the term black person is a generic term. When you go to the um, supermarket and you get generic products, what that, what that means to you? Or when you got to go and get prescription filled at a pharmacy, what that means, you know, what does generic mean? Something that's not real or not original. Right. It's not the same product as which that you're looking for, but it would do. Right, That's what that means. Right. Right. It's not what I'm looking for, but it would do. You know, it served the same purpose. So that's mm-hmm. what the term black person means in law. It's a generic term. or gen- and, and so um, in the Constitution, it says occurring in Constitution and law must be taken in its generic sense. Because in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, it defines us as what? Three-fifth person. Mm. Article 1, Section 2 defines wow. so-called Negro, Blacks, and Colors as three-fifth person. Three-fifth person. Now, for those who never took fractions, um, <laughs> um, I believe that, you know, um, you should have been by the third grade, you should have been taking that. I don't know if, you was, I don't know if people was paying attention or not. You know, because, you know, after they get out of school, all of a sudden they forget everything that they was taught and, right. no longer, and, and, and don't want to use anything on which they got taught. You know, because they're off into the um, workforce and trying to learn what, you know, they have to learn there. But when we get into it, um, three-fifths is not a whole being. Not at all. Five-fifths is a whole being. All right? Now, when you go to the Black Soul Dictionary, when you go to Civilis Mortus, the definition of civilis mortus, it means one who is dead in the eyes of the law. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Having no civil rights. And that's what a three-foot person has, no civil rights, dead in the eyes of the law. Why do you think the word black person is generic? Mm-hmm. Or you think Negro, you know what I'm saying, have all those different definitions or defying words to it? African. Colored, you know, because these are all based on color, which is color of law. Color of law, the appearance or semblance without the substance of legal rights. That's what color of law means. It has the appearance and the semblance, but without the substance of legal right. It has no substance. That's right. So that means that when we use these particular words, Negro, Blacks, and Colors, African American, it has no substance in law because these are not these are nouns. These are not nouns. These are adjectives. These are adjectives. That means they describe a thing, but they're not a noun. A proper noun is, by definition, something in which that um, is person, place, or thing. So when describing a natural person, it must be something natural. Not something artificial. Right. Right? 
In other words, nothing artificial in which that has no substance. In other words, if it's natural, then it has substance. So when you look at the word color, it says in appearance or semblance or um, stimulacrum or distinguished from that which is real. The prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible or assumed exterior, concealing a lack of reality, a distinguished or a disguise or pretext. And then it comes down, and then it says, the word also means the dark color of skin, showing the presence of Negro blood, or hence it's equivalent to African descent or parentage. <clears throat> now, excuse me, the skin showing the presence of Negro blood. You can't see my blood. And what, no the, hell is, and what the hell is Negro blood? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> what they're talking about is melanin. That's what they're talking about. Because it says the dark color of the skin, showing the presence of Negro blood. Negro blood is, <laughs> you know, it doesn't exist because Negro is an adjective itself and it describes the things. But what is that blood that they're talking about, actually? It's talking about your dominant DNA, that when you mix in with them, you genetically annihilate them for generations. This is this is not according to Dr. Aleem Al Bay. This is according to Gregor Mendel, the so called father of European genetics. That's why it doesn't make any difference where uh the Asiatic brother or Asiatic sister uh they say uh uh, uh Albion a man or a woman. The gene still it is still dominant. Right. And that's what then that's basically what that means. So when you're looking at that dominancy, that's what it's talking about, is that Negro blood in which they're referring to is that dominancy of that melanin, the dark color of the skin. And that dark color of the skin, they describe it as Negro, black, colored, all these adjectives. But when I go to the definition of land, in the Black Slow Dictionary, then I begin to get some clarity on what's really going on. Mm -hmm. I start getting some real clarity. And it says, according to Black Slow Dictionary, land, in the most general sense, comprehends as ground, soil, or earth whatsoever, as fields, meadows, pastures, woods, moors. Waters, marshes, fishes, and heaths. Land is the foundation of nationality, and the name more symbolizes the birthright, ties, or heritage. In international law, Negro, blacks, and coloreds in the said United States of America are listed as stateless, hence, i.e., landless. Mm. So, hence, the word Negro, blacks, and colored give you no land ties. And it leaves you stateless. But the word moors is synonymous with land. Yes, sir. The word moors is synonymous with land. Why leave that in there? They could have just erased the history. But see, that's because these masons and shriners, they was giving up. Um, they had to take the oath from those in which that was under the Moorish science to uphold the truth and to keep these particular pieces of codes for us when we awaken so that we can put the pieces of the puzzle back together again. And this is how the Moors are going to come back into rulership. That's right. It's, by piece, it's putting the pieces of this puzzle back together, not by bickering and debating on the things in which that Prophet Nubadra Ali said or did or didn't do or what happened or et cetera. Or who's the fake Moors and who's the real Moors and all of this other nonsense. Right. There is no such thing as real and fake Moors. If you have land ties and you have declared your nationality and you have land and you have a heritage in which that you can identify, then you are a Moor. 
simple as that. And this is what Prophet Noble Jali meant when he said that, um, you know, that basically you shall, you know, so your days may be long upon the land, you know, your mother and father, you must honor them so that your days may be long upon the land. In other words, um, your forefathers and your foremothers, you know, you know, are as they were, you know, in other words, from ancient times until now, and that were Moabites. They was Moors. In other words, they were symbolic to, they symbolized land. They were synonymous with the land. So this means that no matter where I walk, if it's in America, if it's in Africa, I'm still indigenous and I'm still a Moor. Case closed. Right. Because, we, because I am, I come in the image of the oldest people on the face of the planet. And this is why I am despised. This is why dark complected people all over the planet are despised and put within the category as being minors or the minority, even though we outnumber them 18 to 1 on the planet Earth. And by 2043, there won't be any whites or Europeans in the United States. Check that out. So this is the reason why... um, as a matter of fact, if you get the CIA statistics from the 1990s or the late 1980s and you get the book by William Bill Cooper, known as Behold a Pell Horse, there was already over 80 million of us then. There was already over 80 million, and there was only 300 million people in the United States, and there was already over 80 million of us then. So that means by 2043, we will make up more than half of the population of the United States, or what they refer to as the United States. And we know the difference between the United States Corporation versus, i.e., the United States of America, Mm -hmm. in which that America actually had the superior position, in which that the United States actually formed from out of the Virginia Company, and became a corporation around um, the 1800s, officially. So we're looking at America, and America is not of the United States. The United States is of America. Once again, one has the superior position. So by declaring your nationality, your status, your birthright, taking back your birthright, You become an American, not a U.S. citizen, which is nothing more than a 40-mile radius known as Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, the federal government. You are not members of the federal government. Matter of fact, go to Dred Scott versus Sanford. That particular Supreme Court case law, once again, um, Article Three Court, and Judge Taney was the same one who ruled over the land of the Turnicuff family, which is the Washita in 1848 and 18 in um in 1850, but in the Dred Scott case decision, he gave his ruling that Negroes and those of African descent are not U.S. citizens, nor would they ever be. That's right. All right. So it did. Now the U.S. is the federal government. We're not U.S. citizens, and we'll never be. Now, the states have come in and they have set up this trust because of its states. Now, what happened is that being that um, we have lost our quote-unquote memory and we now have amnesia, we are in a dead state. And of course, now, as more as we are resurrecting, there's a renaissance of the Moors going on right now, and it's been going on for the last 15 years. You know, thank you to brothers like um, Hakeem H. Y. Bay. Thank you to um, Queen Valahara. Thank you, um, Bay. Thank you to um, brother Taj Tyreek Bay. Thank you to um, Sister Ross Mariah Bay. Thank you to um, many others Moors 
particularly those coming from the Great Seal National Association of Moorish Affairs, coming from the Clock of Destiny, coming from um, many other sources. The Washita de Dugdamania up under the Empress, Vidyasi, Tunica Washita, Gaston L. Bay. Many people we have to recognize for this resurgent of Moorish divinity that is taking place right now, this Moorish renaissance in which that is taking place right now, us learning more about the Moorish national and divine movement, or for those who are spiritual or who understand the signs of the Holy Breath, the Moorish divine national movement. All right, so we give thanks to all of them for um, awakening um, the people, you know, you know, 15 and 20 years ago into this, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago into this information. Because without them, this information now would not be mainstream enough in order to do what we have to do. And that's right. the five, you know, to actually come back into order, you know, come back into the families of nations as Prophet Nobudrali stated. You know, come back into the constitutional fold And the portion of the constitution in which that identifies us And which that we can utilize Is talking about mostly Article 6 of the constitution In which that deals with the United States Constitution Being its laws and the treaties being the supreme law of the land In particular, the treaties is what we can utilize All right, as well as um, Aboriginal title In which that the treaties are also um, connected to and relevant to, all right, as well as also the Bill of Rights, Amendment 1 through 10, right? So these are the things in which that we can actually utilize, and this is the reason why you declare your nationality and take back your birthright. Right. And understand your divine creed. People don't even know what the divine creed is. You know, um, Prophet Nubadra Ali stated that he is a um, universal prophet, this is why on your national on the nationality card coming from from you know if you join the temple on the nationality card it specifically states that we honor all prophets Jesus Muhammad Buddha Confucius etc. Now for those that don't realize it, <clears throat> they may say that well I'm Muslim, and that's true. However, what people don't realize is that. That has nothing to do with religion. That has to do with your makeup. All right? When you look at the word Muslim or Muslim, you know, which are Arabic terms or words, the word um, Arabic is 62% of the Metuneta, coming from the Tamaran or Tamarian people, which is known mm -hmm. as the um, ancient Kemetan or Kemetians or known as the Egyptians. And the word in which that is equivalent to the word... Um, Muslim is Misram, M-E-S-R-E-M. -E now, we know that within the Metuneta, the R, the letter R, and the letter L are synonymous. They are interchangeable within the script. So M-E-S-R-E-M -E becomes M-E-S-L-E-M. -E so Muslim, and that's how you get the term Muslim or the word Muslim. But the word Misram or Muslim means a child of Ra. It means the child of the sun, the children of the sun. That's what it means. And anyone who has melanin are children of the sun because the sun kiss your skin. And you're able as a melanated people or being to take in the solophatic energy and your melanocytes act as black holes for this energy and you're able to store this energy inside of your body. Man, that's deep. All right? In Taoism, they teach us the three areas that you can store this divine energy. You store it at your navel if you want in, um, immortality or longevity. If you want love and compassion, then you store it at your heart. If you want um, a high IQ and intelligence, then you want it at your third eye. These are the three places that we store this divine energy in which that we receive, as the sun being the giver of life and coming in the image and after the likeness of 
God, which is the divine cosmic energy itself, or what is known as prana, chi, or ki. All right? So this is what we have to understand, understand, and understand. All right? So when we're talking about um, Muslim or Muslim or Mesram, we're not talking about a religion. This existed before a prophet Muhammad, or was known as Abdullah ibn Allah, all right, or Abdullah um, ibn Abdullah uh, Mustafa Alamin. All right, this is this 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 was before a person from 1400 years ago, before he took on the title Muhammad, in which that he took from out of Ethiopia when he went there when he realized that he had relatives in that region, all right? Because when you look at the word Muhammad, it actually was a title uh, from the priesthood of Happy. And that symbolizes the river Nile god or deity or Netter. Hmm. And what Happy bought was called Serem. The word Serem, S-A-R-E-M, and like we said, the R's are interchangeable with the L's. It becomes S-A-L-E-M. So what happy bought was Salam, in which that became the word Islam, which means the sanctuary of peace. All right? So this is what these words originate from. And people, being that Prophet Nobu Dali stated specifically that he's an Egyptian adept, it, it would make sense for the people these grand sheiks to take the information back to the Egyptian information. Instead, they're playing with it. They still got people trapped up in damn religion. Yes, sir. When most of these things are symbolic, veiled in allegory, they are symbolism veiled in allegory as the, as the so-called Freemason states. You know, and they still bickering over if Prophet Nobud Ali was a Mason or not. He was. But he said that he came to reveal the secrets of the secret societies. He came to uncover and reveal those secrets. All right? That's what we're supposed to be doing, not acting like them and not revealing it and not telling the people the truths of the matter. Right. The whole thing now is supposed to be in Egyptian order. The whole planet. <laughs> Being that there is no more kings and queens over people And we are all supposedly being declared within the Americas As being sovereign unto ourselves Then we all supposed to have that um, serenity And being able to um, have that Egyptian connection unto ourselves This is what we supposed to be going, what's supposed to be going on But people are still playing with it and deceiving people and so when we get into the artificial um, persons or legal entities, we have another word in which that is connected to this, which is called stromius homo, which in Latin, it means a man of straw, one of no substance. We've we heard that at before when we said no substance. When you look up the word, once again, when we just did the word colored, it says no substance. That's right. So here it is, the one of the words in which that they have associated with us over the last 100 years means no substance, and here it is connected to the word strawman's homos, which means a man of straw, a straw man. If you go to Black's Law Dictionary, um, the sixth edition, it says straw man, a front, or a third party who is put up in name only to take part in a transaction. So you was put up in name only by way of your birth certificate. So, no, they no longer had to do slavery because now they had a third-party front for you, which was your birth certificate, which is a bond. Mm -hmm. They was able to tie you into bondage. I have a bond certificate. Right. So it says nominal party to a transaction, one who acts as an agent for another for the purposes of taking title to real property. So the purpose was to put up your birth certificate in order to be able to take um for um to take title to real property. So they have the title to your real to your property, to your real property. 
that they will soon have to relinquish. And according to some, the title or the lease was up in 2004. So we've been bickering for the last nine years when the damn title been up for nine years now. <laughs> Instead of jumping on it and doing what we need to do and executing whatever documents or instruments the principal may direct. See, we are the principal and we have to direct them who is over the trust. Because that's what they have done. They don't put our titles in trust. This is why Prophet Nobu Ali put the vast estates within the trust, an express trust. What is the estates? The estates are the states themselves. Because when you look at the land grant, the Spanish land grant, in which that the Washita has as being part of that family, and Prophet Nobu Ali being a descendant of that family, or that tribe, and he being the fifth prince, Marquise Mason de Rouge. All right? He's the fifth prince. This is why he said that, you know, he is um, five times stronger than he was before. This is what he was talking about. He was talking about him being the fifth prince of the Marquise Mason de Rouge. Now, for those who want further information, you can go to our website, www.drlimelbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y. And go and click on there onto the United Washington um, section and the Moorish Holy Temple of Science section. And you can read the documentation in order to verify everything that I'm talking about. So the definition for straw man goes on. Person who purchases property for another to conceal identity of real persecutor or to accomplish some purpose otherwise not allowed. So this is what they have done. By creating the original bond, which is the birth certificate, they have taken our real property, our title to the real property, and put it within the trust as if they're holding it for us because they can't be the real um, beneficiary. They can't really be the real owners of the land. That's right. So it says people who purchase this property for another. So they purchase the property in order to conceal the identity of the real person, um, pur- um, purchaser. Well, the real owners actually are us. All right? And this is verified. In their history, this is why when I read the um, definition of indigenous, it says for those who had a historical continuity here prior, um, here in the Americas prior to the invasion of their territories by the Europeans. The Europeans taught us since kindergarten that they was the invaders. So who was here? But see, they had us believing that it was the Chinese that was the original American. In sociology class, when I was taking sociology, and I have a degree in sociology, a BA in sociology, um, when I was in school, um, Dr. Stokes, who was one of my teachers, played an audio tape in which that showed how at the turn of the century, at the turn of the 1900s, we had sociologists who reclassified the Chinese as Indians. Wow. So now all of a sudden we see Indians with Chinese features. But that's not how they looked in the the south and on the eastern seaboard and in the Great Lake area or in California. These were people who looked like us. They was our relatives. This is why when you go and ask grandma or great-grandma, you know, what our heritage is, and they say in Choctaw, Cherokee, Creek, or Muscogee, Seminole, Chickasaw, how they're saying all these particular names and these are names in which they had to lose to Indian. Don't grandma or great grandma, shouldn't they know who the hell they are? You know, so this is why they had to tell us in school that we came from, you know, Africa. You know, it's still the land, as we just finished talking about. So this is what left us stateless and landless was that was that tale that they told to us. 
All right? This is what happened. Now, um, all right, somebody asked, what makes Black's Law Dictionary the authority on language? It doesn't. It doesn't make anybody the authority on language, but when you study linguistics and you study different languages, that makes you an authority in the sense of if you are able to connect the pieces from various different languages. We know that the language within law is Latin. We know the language within the medical profession is Latin. We know when you study herbology or plants or herbology, you know, or herbalism and plants, that's Latin. So they say that Latin is a dead language. But when you go and do some research, you find that Latin actually is Moorish. All right? There's a brother, um, Prince Uriel um, Bay, in which that just passed recently, you know, peace and blessings be upon him, he taught Moorish Latin. Huh. Right? He taught Moorish Latin. Wow. All right? So what has to happen is that we need to go back and start doing our research on these various languages because all of these languages come from out of the ancient mystery school. All right? Whether it's Latin, whether it's Phoenician, Hebrew, Arabic, these are all languages in which that stems from out of the ancient mystery school of Egypt, from out of the interior of Africa. They're not European languages. Now i right. got to learn that language, more it's Latin. All right, so. I do. Oh, yeah, you definitely have to learn it because it don't make any sense. So when we're talking about, once again, so when we're talking about Latin, we're talking about Moorish Latin. Remember, the first Romans were the Etruscians. The Europeans, when they coming out the Caucasus Mountains, they didn't know how to speak no language. They was talking about Unga Bunga. They was, they was eating the dead. They was crawling around on all fours. We had to civilize them. So they, they could not have given us no language. We are the civilizers of the world. That doesn't even make any sense. So all languages come from us. We gave them the language in which that we chose to give them. All right? And so we spoke Latin first. The Etruscians were the first Romans. J. Rogers, Sex and Race, what they never told you in history class by Indo Kim and Kush, Renoka Rashidi. Go and do the research. All right, so we spoke right. these particular languages. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, we spoke Greek, or what they call Greek, but actually it's Phoenician, which is a form of Hebrew, because we were known as the Minoans. And the Minoans was out of the priesthood of men. They followed men, which is the ancient Egyptian deity in which that was um, the god of fertility. The men knowing this is who they were. So no, um, the Black Slow Dictionary don't have the authority on language, but we're talking about linguistics. And as being the bearers of linguistics, which means language encoded within our DNA, within our genealogy, and how we know this because the simple fact is, is that when you compartmentalize the brain, psychologists and scientists have found that people can actually speak languages that they was never formally trained or taught in school. How the hell is that possible? It's not. Because it is encoded inside of your DNA. And so whenever an ancestor wants to speak, you can go back to that particular lineage and get that answer. Wow. And speak those languages. So we want to put the pieces of the puzzle back together in Metuneta and begin to speak ancient Egyptian, or if we want to speak the dead language or what it's called Latin, we can. There's no problem with that. But you have to embed yourself within those particular languages in order to get the feel for it. To utilize your tongue, and then those particular sciences will begin to start coming to us to the forefront once again. And that's the problem with our people, being that we've been dissociated, you know, and been given adjectives such as Negro, Blacks, and Colors, African Americans, and etc. We don't have a culture. 
because we're based everything on these particular artificial labels. But when we come back into being Moors, which as we showed the definition of land, and as we showed means indigenous or native, and as we showed it means natural person, once we come back into that, then we can begin to start developing a culture once again. Being that we civilized the world, that is no problem at all. Right. That shouldn't be a problem at all. All right? So, yes, yeah, so there really is no such thing as European names. There's no doubt about that, Brother um, Heru. No doubt. There is none. All right? It's out for, matter of fact, the word Europe is taken from the um, from the from um, from a queen um, known as Europa. All right? And actually the word Europa actually stems from the word Europa, which is a tribe from out of um, Africa, from out of Nigeria. In which that um, went up into who was actually part of the dynasty of um, ancient Kemet um, of the 18th dynasty under um, Queen Hesheshet, in which that went up into um, what we now know as Europe, or what become known as Europe. Actually, it was Asia Minor. There is no such thing as Europe when we look at it. It was Asia Minor. You had Asia Major and Asia Minor. There is no continent on the planet in which that, um, in which that does not end and start um, and start with A and ends with A. America, whether it's North, South, Central America, or the adjoining islands, America, it starts with A and ends with A. Asia starts with A, ends with A. Antarctica starts with A, ends with A. Australia starts with A, ends with A. Africa starts with A, ends with A. Check that out. All right? So, when we get into that, there is no Europe, because Europe don't even fit the criteria of a continent. Because, you know, in order to be a continent, you must be surrounded by water. It's not. All right? So, it's nothing more than part of Asia. All right? So, let's get that straight when we look at it historically and based on geographic. All right, yeah, we hit it, we hit it, brother. Um, once again, we going um start it on off. We was answering the question, um, in the chat room, um, concerning, um, well, where did um where did the devil get this Greek mythology from? Well, according to the newer consensus and based on historians coming forth, they made it up. You know that these hundreds and thousands of artifacts which they, and relics in which they, they cast um into the um, Mesopotamian Sea. Uh, Medi- uh, Mediterranean, excuse me, Mediterranean Sea. So um, you can actually get scuba gear, uh, scuba gear on and go down and scuba dive and see these artifacts underneath the water. You know, so we know how they get down with that. You know, we know that's what they've been doing. You know, so this is the problem in which that um, has, um, you know, been pet- you know, um, perpetrated against us. You know, is them taking... Um, our land and hiding who the original people are, you know, and this is what's going on. This is what we went back to, what we talking about, the minorities, and how even you look in the Black Flow Dictionary, you look up the word minority, it means infantile mind, immature. So when they, even though we outnumber them 18 to 1, when you look up the word minor, um, which is the root of minority, it means one who has an infantile mind, one who cannot provide for himself, and one um, who is immature. Wow. And the race right now, this is exactly how we are acting, because they provide for us for everything. So you want to breathe? Okay, well, we put chemtrails in the air. Oh, you want food? So we put GMOs into the food. Oh, you want water? Okay, well, we put fluoride in the water. As long as you're not providing for yourself, we'll take care of you. Of course we will. <laughs> so they got us all. And what the Prophet Noble Drali states, he said that um, that um, based on us wanting to stay Negro, Blacks, and Colors, that we are seen as being undesirable. And that's the truth. We are referred to by the Rockefellers and others as useless eaters. That's right. So now they come with the genetic, um, with their um, um, eugenic program and population control agenda, in which that, that is what they're pushing now. You know what I'm saying? And for those in which that don't die off, well, they got another thing for you, which is the New Jim Crow, which um, deals with mass population, fail. 
in the United States, only 5% of the, of the world population, that's what we are. In the United States, only make up 5% of the population, but goddamn, it has 25% of the world prisoners. We're right. so-called blacks making up 65% of the U.S. prison system in population. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? In less than three decades, the United States population exploded from 300,000 to more than 2 million. And the majority of the convictions increased from drugs, from drugs violations. So we have the world, so, so it has resulted in the world's highest incarceration rate, exceeding the rate of numbers um, um, of other countries around the world. As a matter of fact, exceeding the numbers of people of um, of so-called blacks in college, male and female. Yes, sir, that's right. Mm-hmm. Exceeding the numbers of the whole military, of the whole United States military. There's more people in jail than the whole damn United States military. That's no coincidence. No, nah, that's no coincidence. At all. And then about 7.6 million, almost 8 million are under the prison correctional control. All right? So this is what's going on. The prison population grew from 700% from 1970 to 2005 at a rate that outpaced in crime and population rates. The incarceration rates disproportionately impact on men of color, or as we would say, on moors, on black, on so-called black males, melanin, melanin people, melanin males in particular. One in every 15 moors, Moorish men, and um, you know, and one in every 36 Hispanics are incarcerated in comparison to one in every 106 so-called Albion men. Okay, so this is what they're what they're banking on. For those that don't die off, they got something else for you, you know. And we know that their labor is now used as um, the, those who are in prison or warehouse, you know, or what is known as war to the states. And their labor is now being used as globalized economics. Wow. All right, and so in prison they're making computers. They're making cars. I remember as as a youth, I remember um, um, when I was young, you know, we heard of them making license plates. But they done took that shit to the whole new level now. They're making computers. They're making cars. They're making all types of things in there. And getting paid 29 cents to a dollar and 50 cents an hour. Slave wages. That's all it is. Well, I mean, it makes the it makes good sense, you know, because we know what those wages is based on. You know, we know in the Constitution, the Thirteenth Amendment, Section One, it says neither slavery nor um, involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime. And that's exactly what's going on. Right, and that's exactly what's going on. And it's no coincidence, you know. Um, that 80% of the prisons are in Republican areas. You know, so for, you know, all these Negroes to come out, you know, at this particular time against Obama during the election and become Republican, you know, such as, um, who was saying that dumb shit? <laughs> um, Nicki Minaj and all these people talking about they was rep- they are Republicans. And 80% of the goddamn prisons are in their sections or in their areas. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, I know Lincoln used to be a Republican. Yeah, Lincoln was a Republican. But they ain't got nothing to do nowadays. That was that was under the Republic. That's right. There is no Republic now. No, it's been overthrown. You know, it's been overthrown with a de facto government. So there is no de jure government. You don't believe me? Go to the Blackstone Dictionary and look up statue. This is what is going on. In amorality, everything is based on statues. Codes, rules, regulations, ordinances, and it says a statue is a bond. And so that's what all criminal statues are. They bonds. Courtroom charges are civil. 
not criminal. Everything involves a bond. When you're arrested, there's two different sets of bonds. You have the bid bond, fill out when you're when you are arrested, and you end up signing it. You have the um, um, you have um, at the district court level, if you have federal charges, and you got the SF two seventy three, which is the bid bond. You have the two seventy four, the performance bond, and you have the two seventy five, which is the payment bond. At the lower court level, you have the GSA. SF forms, which is 24, which is the bid bond. The performance bond is the 25, and the payment bond is the 25A form. And they're all put out by the GSA under the control of the commerce, under the GAO, which is the General Accounting Office of the United States. And so Mm. these bonds have a penalty attached to it, or some penalty attached to it. For each violation, which is a felony, is $1 million. Wow. So if it's kidnapped, if it's murder, if it's attempted murder, if it's whatever, and then if they get you for each offense, this is what they're doing. And they're using your exemption in order to, um, to do it. Now, those who might not know what the exemption is, your exemption is your Social Security number without the dashes. But the password which that taps you into that is on the back of your Social Security card, which is your prepaid levy bond number, which is known as your IMF, International Monetary Fund number. It's written in all red. Exactly. It's written in all red. Mm-hmm. It's written in all red. Exactly. And what people don't know is where that takes you to. Remember, we still on the yellow brick road. Remember, they was going to where? Land of Oz. Right, the Emerald City. Remember, they was on the yellow brick road. The yellow bricks symbolizes gold. Right. Where did the gold go? Right, before 19... There was gold. But you got caught up with the straw man. You got caught up with the tin man, taxpayer identification number. You got caught up with the cowardly lion. And y'all all on the way to the Yellow Brick Road, to the Emerald City, city, which is symbolic to the Federal Reserve Bank. That's what that is symbolic to. So, what is another term for central bank? Yeah, right, the centralized bank. So when you look at the original Social Security card, which was designed by Fred Hampel of Albany, New Jersey, well, in New York, excuse me, in 1936, that's where the card was created. And the creation of the Social Security card account is known as the Secti Q Trust. And it means basically that you have a beneficiary, um, um, that you are a beneficiary in this equitable interest in a trust, which the legal title be invested to the trustee. Oh, and you can read this in um, the United States Supreme Court case, Green versus Underhill. But the IRS is the accounting and collection division of the International Monetary Fund, the bankers, who the company owes money to. Right? Remember, the country is bankrupt. That's right. So it is nothing more than a company which is filed, which has filed bankruptcy. And they did that in 1933 under the House Joint Resolution 192, June 5th. That's what I keep talking today on the CNN News, talking about they reaching the debt ceiling. Right. <laughs> what debt ceiling? <laughs> exactly. Whatever the one that they make up tomorrow. <laughs> no such thing. Right. There's no such thing because there's nothing of substance. You there's no, no gold, gold or um, there's no um, silver in which that is back in the fiat notes. So where's your debt? Right. So where your debt is. Where right. is your Social Security Administration? Where is it? Exactly. So we know that your Social Security card, which is your exemption without the dashes, is the bridge between the private side and the public side. Mm-hmm. And we know that the International, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, took the application and the pledge your future labor as a guarantee for payment to the bankers. That's what they did. If you go and read the IRC, which is the Internal Revenue Code, 
At birth, you're worth $650,000. At birth. You said the, uh, the, the Internal Revenue Code. Yes, the IRC. Okay. The International, oh, the, excuse me, the, um, the Internal Revenue Code. You're worth, at birth, $650,000. So you're worth almost a million dollars at birth. And as you and as you turn 18, into the hundreds of millions of dollars, it matures. Mm. Now, people don't understand. Go and look under the doctrine of penis patria, which means government as parent. That's Latin for government as parent. <laughs> now, you know damn well the government should not be your parent, but you signed over your child, mothers, fathers, at birth, and on the birth form, which is the birth certificate, on the original one, it says specifically that the mother is the informant. Right. And if you look at the substitute birth certificate that they um, give you at the Register of Deeds, if you look down on the left-hand side, it says Midwest Bank Note Company or American Bank Note Company. In other words, and those numbers in red on the birth certificate is your bond number. All right? So as a result of manipulation, the bankruptcy of the United States of America in 1930, all the assets of the so-called American people, their person and of our country itself was held by the Depository Trust Company, which is located at 55 Water Street, New York City, New York. Which, secure, which is secured by the Uniform Commercial Code and their liens, you know, which are being monetized as debt money by the Federal Reserve Bank. I forget. Where you said the, uh, the bond number is located? On your birth certificate on the left-hand side. But if okay. you come down at the bottom left-hand side, you'll see uh, which bank and which that, um, that transpired through. Okay. West Bank No Company or the American Bank No Company, one of those. Okay. All right. Now wow. we know that there's twelve. If you look on the back of your Social Security card, you have a letter in front of those eight digits. Right. All right. If you have A, that's the Federal um, Reserve Bank of Boston. If you have B, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. If you have C, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. If you have wow. D, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. If you have E, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. If you have F, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. If you have G, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. If you have H, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. If you have I, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. If you have J, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. If you have K, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. You have L, that's the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. <clears throat> These are the 12 Federal Reserve Banks in which that auction you right before they put you out on the stock market. What does the A stand for? A stands for the bank, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Okay. Okay. The Treasury okay. is also a bank. If you look at um, Title 31, United States Code, Section 321, it spells out that the Secretary of State um, of um, the Treasury, excuse me, is the CFO of the Treasury Bank. This is the reason why when you do your um, UCC, um, one financial statement and other documents or affidavits in which that goes along with it because it's not by itself, you send this information to Timothy Geithner or who is known as the Secretary of Treasury, in order to activate and open your trust account. Hmm. Wow. All right, because he's he is a bank, and not just that. As a matter of fact, um, speaking of Timothy Geithner, you know, he was the executive officer or the CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. You know. Hmm. Before he became, um, you know, the, um, the United States Treasury, um, you know, Secretary. And New York is B. So he was over the second district for the Reserve Bank before he became 
the Secretary of Treasury. So as the Secretary of Treasury, um, he's like the payroll clerk, you know, as you know, as most any companies, you know, in which that you know that you might have seen or had to go for, especially in human resources. There's no coincidence that they call it human resource, um, but he acts as a dual capacity of both the um, payroll clerk and receiver in the bankruptcy of the bankers. That's basically <clears throat> his position. Man. You know, so this is what people don't realize. You know, so when we're talking about all of this, you know, they got to be clear, you know, of, once again, the difference between artificial and natural. And so they have to learn how to write up certain affidavits, in particular a denial of corporate status will have to be one. After you declare your nationality or you do an affidavit of um, nationality or affidavit of citizenship, affidavit of truth, affidavit of facts, affidavit of common law name correction, affidavit of revoking power of attorney, Affidavit of non-taxpayer status, affidavit of of um, baptismal record or live claim birth, you know, affidavit of, like we said, the denial of corporate status. All of these particular affidavits, you know, you will write up and you'll go to the register of deeds and you will put them on public record. Or if you have a register's um, there's a uh, register um, place in which that you can actually put them online as a form of public record, or you can put them in the newspaper as a form of public record. The point is is to put it on the public record so that people can know your stance and that you have changed your status from three-fifth person to be to being a five-fifth or a whole per- person, a whole being, I should say. Right, a natural being that you put yourself back in as to being a natural being because a three fifth person is also defined by Ballantine Law Dictionary as being a monster. A human being is a monster according to the Ballantine Law Dictionary. A beast. The Jews refer to the so called Gentiles or those who operate from their genitals who think with their little head and not their big head as being gohim, cattle or chattel. Hence, you get to the word, the French word chattel, which is the English transliteration cattle, herds to the slaughter, gohim, or goy. Gohim is plural. I heard the word goya or goyim. Right, goyim. Right, so this is what um, they refer to us as, you know, but we're not the Gentiles. Originally, we was never the Gentiles. We was always God's chosen people because we were the first people on the planet Earth. So how else could we be anything else? Actually, when you talk about the Goyim, actually, you talk about the European. That's exactly who we're talking about. Because they're the only ones who works and operate off their lower nature to that extent. Huh. With all the destruction in which they have perpetrated against the masses of the people on the planet Earth. In every country, in every environment, they have gone and destroyed, manipulated, created catastrophes. I mean, this this is some devilish work going yes, on. It is. There's no doubt about it. That that was uh, really a lot of uh, news to me uh, when you name out the Federal Reserve banks, as oh, A yeah. being Boston, and B was New York. Right. Yeah, that was that's, 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 that was that's, that's something new I just learned. All oh, right. Well, that's because the birth certificate is a negotiable instrument, and it's registered security, a stock certificate, evidenting and representing the preferred stock of the corporation. Hence, you, i.e., you, against which you are the surety, is a pedigree chattel document establishing okay. the existence of the straw man. That's what they're, use, they're using the New York Stock Exchange today. And they're using the New York Stock Exchange, and which that is the um, um, national, you know, domestic, as well as also the foreign stock exchange, which is the international. Hmm. And your birth certificate is being sold worldwide. 
Everybody's getting a piece of it. Is, is that for you? Oh. So is the title of so is the document of title to a straw man? It is a warehouse receipt for your body. Delivery receipt. Industrial bond between you, the flesh and blood, man or woman, and the industrial society in corporate United States or the official person. Mm. That's what it is. How devilish can you get? Exactly. And that's what I was saying. Boy, this is, if we really knew how deep this rabbit hole really went, you know, if we really knew, would we wake the fuck up or would we want to stay in the matrix? Or would we want to stay in Oz? <laughs> that's where most of them they want to stay. Oh, yeah. That's where most of them do want to stay. They and that's why the majority faith. of them have not declared their nationality as of yet. No, they want to you know, try to just, uh, explain it to them. They act like uh, you crazy, or they just don't, they just don't want to hear. You know, it brings them out of something that they don't want to let go or, you know, of the fear that they may uh, miss out on something. But look, it's real simple. It's real simple. The United States citizen is on file in the official records in Washington, D.C., and the property and the assets of every living U.S. citizen which they, oh, based on what I've told you, under Negro, Black, and Color status, they have you under that category or classification as U.S. citizen, even though the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. That's Meaning right. that you are not a U.S. citizen. Nor will you ever be. Dress Scott versus Sanford. But as you thinking that you are a living United States citizen, you was pledged as collateral for the national debt. <laughs> Since day one. Right, since day one. And if people don't want to believe it, they can go and get the evidence. Federal Children Department established the um, Shepherd Townsend Act of 1922 under the Department of Commerce. And every citizen is given a number, the red number on the birth certificate, the bond number. And every living birth is valued at $650,000. Federal Reserve dollars in collateral from the Fed. So this is slavery. This is how they sold your ass. <laughs> Man. Now what it is, a, a whole, a whole boat, majority of Europeans don't even know it. Right. And this was the bond that was attached to your birth certificate of birth, i.e., your Social Security card on which that demonstrates that. This is why, if you were smart, people would begin to start studying how to tap into the exemption account in order to pay off their debts. And by paying off their debts, and I'm saying paying because there is no real money, but paying through your exemption or being able to access your exemption account to um, to end your debts, it would be wise to do so. Right. This is what this whole thing is about, you know. So when you fill out the proper forms, you know, and before I get to the forms, you know, let's let's go into, you know, um, the party suits over these particular um, liens, you know, which is your birth certificates, who's over this now at these Federal Reserve Banks. We spoke about um, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, which is A, and who's over it is Eric S. Rosengreen, a Jew. We spoke about Bank of New York. And who is over it at the CEO is William Dudley. We spoke about the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. And who's over it is Charles I. Pulser. He's the CEO. The CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland is Sandra Pianalo. Over the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond is Jeffrey M. Lacker. Okay. Over the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta is Dennis P. Lock here, a lock, lock, lock um, heart. Over the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago is Charles L. Evans. Over the CAO of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis is James B. Bullock. CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis is Narayana um, Kokar Lok. Koda. It's interesting, the name. 
Right. Um, CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City is Esther George. Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, CEO is Richard W. Fisher. CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Francisco is John C. Williams. So these are the people who is over these this Federal Reserve Bank. All right? And being that Timothy Geithner is one of the former um, CEOs of the Federal Reserve Bank, um, that means the U.S. Treasury, of course, as we know, is tied directly to the Federal Reserve Bank. And based on the Constitution, the only one in which that has the authority in order to um, actually um, press or print or patent coinage is actually the Treasury, huh. which that, based on what we was told, a dollar actually was coinage. It was not a fiat note. It was not a FRN. It was actually a coin. That was actually a dollar. And based on the Constitution, um, in order to be so-called declared sovereign or have you attached to land, you need at least 20 pieces of silver. Hence mm-hmm. the reason why we keep telling people that they need to get into the silver and gold program. Yes, sir. That's what yeah. I, I be preaching them every day. Right. Because you're going around saying that you have land ties um, and you're saying that you're sovereign or whatever the case is, and you don't have no gold or silver in which that give you the ability in order to invoke common law. So you go to court with no substance. All right? Yeah. This is what the civil bond certificate or the gold bond certificate is actually for, is to put within your court case in order to show that you have something of substance, that you're not the straw man, that you're not, um, you know, the so-called tin man. That you have declared that there's an affidavit of denial of corporate status, that there's a distinction between the natural person or natural being and the artificial person or what is known as the legal entity. This is what is going on. This is what needs to be going on. You know, so, you know, let's see here. I don't know if we've got anybody on the line yet. Let's see. All right, we got some callers. Um, hold on, Brother L. You're on yes, the main, area code 347. You're on the line. Hello? Yeah, we got you. Come on in. What you got? Peace, brother. Peace. Peace. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, I was calling to find out about, uh, I missed out on when you were talking about the continents ending with A and Right, it's real simple, brother. Um, only continents ends with A and begins with A. So the continents begins with A, ends with A. All of them are continents. The one in which that don't, which is Europe, is not. Australia. Okay, why, why, is, yeah, why is that? I, I didn't because A symbolizes yeah. the beginning and the end, which is Alpha, okay. which symbolizes God. Alpha and Omega. Okay. Remember, they tell you in your Bible that Alpha and Omega is the Son of Man. Mm-hmm. Hence, you are in the image and after likeness of the Son of God or the Son of Man. That's actually what you represent, not just a character in which that they composed during 325 A.D. and Constantine nearly 2,000 years ago. Yeah, so so by throwing Europe in there as a continent, I guess that's part of the technology. Of course it is. That's all they've been doing on the planet. Yeah. Okay, brother. Thanks a lot. Let somebody All right. else get on. All right. Peace. 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 Thanks. All right. We got Eric Cole 561. Eric Cole 561. You're on the line. 561. Peace. 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 This is um, Brother Henry out of um, West Palm. Peace, brother. Peace. PJM Hotel. Shim Hotel, brother. Hotel, Mo. I had a question for um, Dr. Dave. They, uh, concerning 1961, you know, the government been trying to go, go out of their way uh, to snatch the guns out of the American people's hands, or you can just say the people, the people's hands, right? and um, go ahead and seize all your weapons so you won't be able to fight back as far as that way. Right, no doubt about it. 
Um, that's what this Sandy um, shooting was set up for in order to um, they, um, make Obama and the Vice President um, Joe Biden in order to put stricter um, laws on, you know, on the guns. Exactly. Mm-hmm. With semi, semi um, automatics, you know. So, um, what we know that Walmart no longer sells semi automatic weapons. So it's already taking place, being that Walmart is one of the largest distributors of corporations. I mean, which that was at one time one of the largest manufacturers of, well, I should say one of the largest distributors of guns. Um, you know, so um, they're no longer selling those particular semi-automatics. So, um, yes, it has already started. And so that's what the um, ploy was behind the Sandy um, Hook um, mask shootings. Um, as we know, you can go to our blog on www.doctalimelbay, that's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y, um, and you can go there and read the blog in which that we particularly laid an outline down on the fraud in which that took place with the mass shooting and actually how um, those were actors in which that was brought in. Um, and when you look at the footage, there are no ambulances, no M- um, EMS, n- nothing. Just cops or just um, sheriffs, and they just blocking the entrance ways and so forth and so on. You know, so you go and do your research, and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. All right. Right, right, right. Um, one more last question. Um, you know, every once in a while, I would get on the uh, the YouTube, and I would see people um, expressing um, their experiences about how they went to hell and how they had these near-death experiences and experiencing themselves um, in front of the devil or uh, uh, Diablo or Satan or Lucifer or whoever they want to say it is. But, um, yeah, could you expound on that for the uh, for the audience here, you know, the listeners, um, what that may be all about? Well, um, number one, is real simple. The mind is what manifests and brings things into existence. So basically when you leave the physical body or whether it's through a near-death experience or whether it's through a death experience, what you take with you are the things in which that you was taught. And so in the case of heaven and hell, we are taught what hell is and what heaven is. And we take the symbolism in which that we was taught and trained and indoctrinated with with us after we leave the physical body um, or do do a near death experience as we were saying, in which that is not an actual disconnection disconnection totally. Um as a matter of fact, um the total disconnection between body and soul takes place after three days after the death of the um upper physical body. If you can actually get there within three days or even you know, three, four days or so you can actually bring the soul back into the body if you know this, um, know that particular alchemy, all right? But when you die, heaven and hell are states of mind, and you project what you've been taught. So if you think about that, you've seen the devil, or that you um, that you was going to hell and so forth and so on, then that's what you're going to experience after you leave. Hmm. Okay, so wow. that's... That. Hmm. Pretty deep. Um, earlier, um, you was uh, cracking a whoop. Uh, uh, um, the whip, you know, uh, concerning the uh, the prison, uh, you know, people in prison with the uh, from twenty five cents to a dollar, you know. But I got first hand experience that they start you off with like ten cents, you right? Know, and then wow. the higher the person can get, you know, right. like a wow. dollar. But you have, you have been in there so long and being slave driven so right. bad that. Pretty much, not too many people are gonna make a dollar. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, if you get what I'm saying, prison is definitely the uh, the modern day enslavement of the mind, the body, and the soul. So, uh, if you don't get on these books, you know, you can get this this knowledge going on. You're definitely gonna be lost in that. And then. Once you get out, you're still going to be in prison because the mentality that you came out with is still going to follow you. You did what I'm saying? Yeah, and matter of fact, if you're a felon, then, I mean, you're relegated permanently down to a second, um, second-class second citizen if you don't declare your nationality. So that that is the key. As a matter of fact, 
um, this this is one of the things in which that we have to do um, as a people because nationality is still um, the thing of the day. That is the key um, to our change of status and us coming back into something of our own. You know, is through declaring our nationality and not to um, just continue to be landless and stateless. It doesn't make any sense. But thank you, brother. I'm gonna go. I got a lot of calls on here, so I'm gonna go to them right quick. Appreciate you. Thank you. You got it. All right, we got area code seven zero four. Area code seven zero four. You on the line? Seven zero four. Hello. Yes, peace, brother. Yeah, peace, brother. Hey, this is uh, Mike. I'm calling from North Carolina. All right, brother Mike from the Charlotte area. Yeah. All right. How you, how you doing? Doing well. Doing well, Mark. Good. Good. Um, I just uh, I had a question about uh. uh Discharging debt uh, Is there a certain way You have to do it Or is a whole lot of filing involved Or How does that all How does that work um, Actually Yes There's a system to it You need to do a Fill out a proper UCC um, One financing statement In which that um, In the debtor's box You need to put The hospital In which that um, You um, You was um, So called birthed in because remember, that, um, you came to birth or to shore, you know, just like ships are birthed, you came to shore or the or your or your mother's water broke, you know, was there at the hospital, so therefore you came to shore. Um, that's what they, um, that's, a, that's admiralty or maritime law. That's based on maritime law. So you have to know how to fill out a proper UCC1 financing statement. All right, so in that debtor's position, you would put, um, if you was born, if you was um, birthed um, in the hospital, then you would put the hospital in which that you was birthed at. If um, you was not um, born in the hospital, um, as they would say, birthed in the hospital, then you would put um, the register of deeds. And if you was not in this country, you know what they consider the so-called United States of America, um, then um, you would put the DTC, the Depository Trust Company. And in other words, if you are here in America but you was not born here, then, um, or, you know, what they call, you know, see, we really are the Americans. We're not U.S. citizens, but, you know, we got to use the terminology in, in, in order to get, convey what we're saying here. But that's what you would do. And in the secure um, box, you would put um, your birth name, you know, and then on the UCC1 addendum, the signer, you would put, um, your indigenous appellation, which are, or your free national name, and you assign um, all the property from the secure party to you, which is now um, in the proper name or a proper person um, outside of the jurisdiction of the artificial person because the artificial person, which is your name spelled in all caps, is the slave name or which has a bond attached to it, hence you are in bondage, you know, so... Um, the indigenous appellation, or what is known as the free national name, does not have a bond attached. Don't have a birth certificate in their system. You might have a baptismal record in which that actually, um, from a church or from a temple, you can actually use in place of um, a birth certificate in order to get um, most things accomplished. Okay, so um, you need a proper one filed. You need a UCC affidavit attachment, you need a negative avertment, you need a copyright, trademark, trade name, you know, um, you need an affidavit for grandpa of attorney, a security agreement, a private agreement, co harmless indemnity clause agreement with a collateral listing, you need an affidavit bond for discharge debt, you need your form 56s, which is your fiduciary relationship, um, you know, and fiduciary appointment letters to the United States um, Secretary of Treasury Timothy F. Geithner and the U.S. Um, Attorney General Eric um, H. Holder and the Commissioner of the IRS Douglas Schumann and etc. You need your non-negotiable chargeback or your non-negotiable bill of exchange, your private bond set off, your fidelity bond, um, your certificate value um, of your so, of your um, birth certificate, for, um, you know, um, on the back, you know. Um, as well as also your optional form ninety, ninety one. Your optional form ninety is the release on lien of real property. Yeah, um, optional 
491 is release of personal property from escrow. What is escrow? That's jail. Um, you need your standard form 28, your affidavit of individual surety. So you need these particular um, forms. You know, you need your registered um, red mail tab. You know, which that um, RB from the um, post office or U.S. Postal Service RB means registered bond. You know, so when you get a registered mail tab, you want registered bond mail tab. You know, and of course, put on your various documents um, the Red Fox stamp, and what that symbolizes. Um, it has two stripes down. It sends up the S, and what that symbolizes real money, as compared to um, the way that they have it on majority of the. Um, stamps, which is only one. So okay. these are the um, documents which that you need, brother. But um, I have to go because I got other callers on the line here. So is there like right, you go to our website like and everything is broken down on there, okay? What is, what is your website? Dr. Alim El Bay, D R A L I M E L B E Y, Dr. Alim El Bay dot com. There's also you can go to our other website, cultural dash freedom dot com. That's C U L. T U R A L dash freedom F R E E D O M cultural dash freedom dot com. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Peace. Peace. All right. We got area code four zero four. Area code four zero four. You on the line? Can you hear me, brother? Yes, we can. Yes, sir. I hear, I hear you more. Okay. This is Brother uh, Dwayne Waters here in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, and Brother just, Dwayne. Uh, How are you going? Yeah, it's beautiful, brother, to sit here and listen and uh, meditate on the vibe <clears throat> that you are bringing forth. I'd just like to ask a question. Can you repeat those uh, Federal Reserve Bank numbers for me? You mean the um, letters? The letters, I'm sorry. Letters. Yeah. Um basically we were saying that um the first district district for the Reserve Bank is of Boston and that's letter A. The second district for the Reserve Bank of New York is B. The third district of Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia is C. Okay. The fourth district for the Reserve Bank of Cleveland is D. The okay. F- the fifth district for the Reserve Bank of Richmond, Virginia is E. As well as also that's tapped into Charlotte. Um, North Carolina, too. Um, okay. The sixth district for the Reserve Bank of Atlanta is F. The seventh district for the Reserve Bank of Chicago is G. The eighth district for the Reserve Bank of St. Louis, Missouri, is H. The ninth district for the Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, Minnesota, is I. The tenth district for the Reserve Bank of Kansas City, Kansas, is J. Um, excuse me, Kansas City, Missouri, is J. Um, the 11th district of um, Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas is K, and the 12th district Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, California is L. It's L. Okay. Thank you, brother. I just uh, sit here and uh, don't want to hold your time up, but truly we are in a positive time. Uh, people, uh, the veil has been lifted, and those who want to sleep, let them sleep, and those who want to yes, wake up, then they need to wake up. Um, peace and blessings. blessings to you, brother. Uh, All right. Um, we got another caller. We got another cause here. We got area code two zero two. Area code two zero two. You on the line? You hear me? Yes, we can. How you doing tonight? Fine. How y'all doing tonight? We doing well. Doing fine, ma'am. That's good. I need to ask. Um, it might sound silly. But I need to ask this question. You know, 202 is the district, Washington, D.C. Right. And what you were saying about um, the 40-mile range. Right, the 40-mile range of Washington, D.C., yes. Does that make every um, person here a U.S. citizen? Yes, it does. Automatic. Right. Now, do you have the right in order to declare... Um, the territory in which that actually makes up Washington, D.C., which is actually Maryland or Virginia, you also have that right, too. Um, actually, you would use the indigenous um, area. Um, matter of fact, the, pow- um, the um, Powhatan 
um, people was the ones within the area known as the so-called um, Moors, or as they refer, became to be fer, referred to as his Indians. But the Powhatan uh, people Powhatan. were in that particular area of Washington, what they now known as the Potomac River um, area of Washington, D.C. Um, okay. So you can actually use the original name of that territory, um, all right, which is called Sharik. Sharik. Right, which is the word, that's where the word Cherokee um, actually um, derives from. Okay. Or so what is called Chir- Chickaquay, which is part Chick- of the Koi Confederation. Okay. Because my mother is from South Carolina and my father's from the North Carolina, but it's like all our people came up and moved up here. And that's Cherokee. And Cherokee. That, and she says, that's oh, what my grandpa says. Mm-hmm. He, we are Cherokees. And, um,. I didn't. I was wondering because I'm trying to. Cl- uh, I voiced it and claim it out that I am a Moor, right? But I right. have not right. put it in on paper or um, publicized it. Put it on. In, um, you you know, y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, I I've been on your website. I've been following you on um also on YouTube, and you make so much sense. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know yes, he ma'am. he just gets me. He I have to, I always looking for you. <laughs> you know, to get that information because right. he he's he he's he, he, he look, he's it's truth. You can right. tell, no doubt. You know, it resonate. I resonate with him every time. So thank y'all, brothers. No, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you more. And y'all have a good night. Thank you, thank you, God of peace, peace of love, peace, peace of love. All right, we get every code three zero nine. Every code three zero nine. You on the line? Yeah, from Illinois. Hello? Yes, please. We can hear you, brother. Yeah, peace, bro. Peace. It's long. It's long. It's long. Yeah, um, I've been following you, too, a lot. Um, some of your um, lectures, you know, on the YouTube. And um, I see you had, that you had to distinguish yourself, you know, separate, separate yourself from a straw man or whatever. Um, right. Also, in some of the research, I came across the herds by statues. Right. The prophet had brought. Yes. Um. Could you elaborate on the herds of Bias statues a little bit? Because it, it, it establishes religious done. organization, um, 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 which was done so in the, eight, the late 1800s, in which that gave the ability in order to have religious protection based on um, amendment, um, the First Amendment, in which that dealt with religious freedom. And of course, um, Congress has no um, right in order to legislate anything in regard to religion that is constitutional. So he put us under the religious protection um, of the um, heard uh, revised statutes. Um, And most of the charters throughout the country in which that was part of the um, temple structure, whether it was, um, um, you know, regular temples or whether if it was what is known as subordinate temples, um, majority of them replaced what was known as the Moorish um, Temple of Science, you know, with the Moorish Science Temple of America on their charters, or the Moorish Holy Temple of Science with the Moorish Science Temple of America on their charters. Because based on what Prophet Nobadrali said, we was forced to make changes. And that's the force of change in which he was talking about from a civic to a religious, as in far as religion offers protection. All right. Literally. Okay. So I mean, that was the force change. Right. So that was the change that was forced was the change from civic to religious. You know, okay. in which that he states that the Moorish Temple of Science, which is actually the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, which is also right. the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the world, was changed to the Moorish um, Science Temple of America, um, you know, based on religious protection. You know, that's what it was based before. Um, and to be utilized as a religious corporation or, um, or in this regard, a religious organization. We know that, you know, churches do not have to pay um, taxes. They are taxes. Right. Then. No and liability. So, right. And they do not have to, um, and they do not actually have to fall up on their 501c3 status, in which that did right. not occur until the 1960s. And that came through um, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson um, did that in 1965, you know, was put together 
you know, the 501c3, and that was to stop the churches or the temples and the mosques um, or the synagogues or whatever the case is from being political. Right. So remember, now also one more. remember your nationality is based on your political status. So mm-hmm. when you're giving back your nationality, you know, hence your nationality, you know, identified as your nationality ID or your nationality card, then you are supposed to be political, civic in mind, you know, but also um, to have that religious protection. So that's what he was trying to give, um, restore back to us. Right, uh, yeah, before you end, uh, yeah, um, back. Um, claiming your nationality, mm-hmm. claiming your nationality, you getting the Ila Bay uh, attached to your name. Now, right. that puts us under the protection of the Islamic creed. But then, right, it also give us oh. it also give us the um, protection of the religious creed, but it also give us our connection back to the land, because mm-hmm. Oktar, Chickasaw, Seminole Creek, which is Muscogee and Cherokee, all are the names of the so-called five civilized tribes. It's no coincidence mm-hmm. that we use Al Bay Il or what is Il Bay Day Ali. You know, um, which are you know, which are the so-called five names. You know, and those five names are connected to those five so-called five civilized tribes. Those were um, our people. You know, under those particular names, mm-hmm. that they coined. You know, coined this by. You know, what I'm saying because those are not actually the original names themselves, but those names. Um, but those particular um, Indian names actually is tied to our Islamic creed, which is our divine creed, which is those particular names, um, which is mm-hmm. El Bay Day Al Ali. Okay. And that also gives us, and by claiming our nationality, doesn't that separate us and also enables us to proceed and probably become a trustee of the vast estate of what the, prop, the prophet left for us? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Islam, Islam. Islam, you got it, brother. Islam, Islam. Islam. Other calls, appreciate you more. Uh, let me go to these other calls. Three zero two, thank you. Three zero two, you're on the line. Three zero two. Wanted to add on to the um, when you was talking about the Walmart and the semi-automatic weapons with Walmart. Okay. For all of those out there, and you know, dealing with this principle from a sovereign perspective, yes. you can go to uh, Apex uh, Guns dot com, and mm-hmm. you can order. You can order what is it's the kit. You gotta put your you you can order a kit for semi automatic weapons, you just gotta put it together yourself. Mm. And it's coming from overseas and you already know if you're dealing with it from a sovereign perspective, you're dealing with the right to bear arms. So I just wanted to um put that out there if you ha- if you need to grab a hold of one of those and you're having trouble getting it from a sovereign perspective, that's the way you can get it. You just gotta order the parts and put it together yourself. Peace, Eileen. Peace, God. How you doing today? Grand Sheep. All right. Peace, peace. He is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm talking about the Grand Sheiks is up in the house with um, mm-hmm. Professor Bill, um as my co-host tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brother Victoria Hill. Okay, yeah. Tonight's yeah. demonstration was excellent, beautiful. This summit oh, yeah, that we went to, that's the beautiful. Grand Sheik right there from out of um, um Missouri. Okay, yes, peace. Peace, peace, peace and love. love. Peace and love to you, boy. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna keep the movement moving. Now, yeah, tell uh, them your perspective on the um on the on the um summit of the moors this weekend. Oh, that was beautiful. It was it was beautiful. That's the best event I ever been to, and going to events, you know, through I I've been to several events for the moors and. That event, I mean, I feel as though we got a lot of things accomplished and we're going to continue to move forward based upon, you know, the social networking that we did while we was down there with various different morals from various different jurisdictions. I think we're going to definitely get a lot accomplished just based on that summit right there. No and doubt. And plus, we got part coming up August yeah. 10th, 2013. Yeah. August the 17th, 2013. So make sure you're all at this next one. We need every single chair. Matter of fact, we want standing ovation the whole time. <laughs> All right, we need as many as people there as possible. Yes, sir. In order to yeah. get the understanding, understanding, understanding of what's really need to be done. Um, right now we got on um agriculture, um 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 agriculture as well as aquaponics. You know, we got on land issues, how to get land, go through the Bureau of Land Management.
management, getting the land patent number, um, putting your own land patent numbers. If there's property in which that's been abandoned, then you can actually claim that property um, because there's people in which that um, do not have relatives and die off, and therefore there's no heirs to the land, and therefore you can actually go in and write your own um, quiet claim deed and actually confiscate that land, simply pay off the taxes if there are still taxes on it, and the land is yours without any backlash whatsoever. And that's even if you're living within the so-called 13 colonies, except you don't have to call um, the so-called, quote-unquote, land management, Bureau of Land Management, in order to do so. You simply write up your own quiet claim deed or your warrant um, deed, and you put that in at the register of deeds, and... um, you know, right then and there, basically, the land is yours if you pay off those taxes. So you always want to get land on which that has no bank and has no mortgage company attached to it. And if you can find land on which that has no heirs attached, then that way you don't have to worry about the heirs um, coming back and snatching the land from you because air land, as we always know, cannot be sold. So make sure that you all understand those um, basic sciences when you are doing um, these things. And um, we see a lot of um, brothers and sisters doing it. And it's not being done properly, so they haven't backlash. Uh-huh. All right. Appreciate you, Brother Messiah. Grand Sheik, we getting ready to go to another call here. Or oh. either you want to stay on and you can um, join on in. We're going to go to area code 205. We're on the line. It's long. It's long. It's long, boy. It's long. It's long. It's all love to obey. I had to ask you a question um, dealing with right. you know, when, when brothers. It's long. Islam, brother Islam. Left Joy, yeah, we got you. Come on. Islam. All right. Um, when 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 Moors were claiming nationality, right? They do the affidavits. You know, when that's been rebutted for point for point, we know that stands that true, right? Stands true in commerce and within law. That's right, brother. Right, and I had got information from this Moor out of New York. He had dropped it on me about a pastel doing a pastel with the nationality right. form and um. The uh, Sun Dry Free War Act. Right. And now, you can use all of that information in your pastel. That's what he was saying. And you can go to the Secretary of State and actually get them to um, authenticate and put their seals on upon your pastel. And you can actually take it to the authentication area in which that they'll um, authenticate the notary. You know, and so you can actually um, have that verified at the Secretary of State level, you know. And um, that is also one of the ways of being able to record, you know, your nationality or your status change, all right? So you can also do it at the state level. You can also do it at the county level, which is the register of deeds or the civil filing section of the clerk of courts. Mm-hmm. Right. I, to, I know I read that you can do it um, before it. ain't there no more. It probably fell behind the chair. Did you look under the bed? Mm-hmm. It's probably there. I knew Peace, peace. Islam. Peace, yeah. Islam. I know I had thought I um, got some information where you can actually do it at federal level, too, in Washington, D.C. Yeah, um, you can. You can, um, um, except you would have to pay um, $35, and you can have it filed, but they really don't have any. And you can also do it at the state level or at Washington, D.C., and you can have it filed. You can, and um, it's for thirty-five dollars, brother. So yes, yeah, you can have it filed there also. Um, matter of fact, those are the steps in which that we would recommend: is either having it filed at the county level, um, at the register of deeds, or at the civil filing section of the clerk of courts, or either moving it up to the secretary of state, or going to, um, you know, going to the federal level, you no, know, and um, at the secretary of state of the United States secretary of state there, and having it filed. Um, and you can do also, do it also, like we said, at the federal level. So you can also go to the federal court and actually put it on um, put um, put it on record for thirty five dollars, you know. And they'll um, put it within their uh, microfilm or uh, microfish um, section, and um, you can actually pull it up for record. But they don't really take the document, but they'll document it. But they won't take your documents and have they don't have a file location like a physical file location. But they will put it in. Um, for you, you know, um, on the microfish. So you can do those different things. There's no doubt about it, brother. Right, right. Now, real quick, now, can you explain um, as the reason the, the importance of filing when vice versa is doing, you know, your regular um, notary, you know, um, at, at federal level? Well, like we said, um, 
talking about the federal level, you're talking about um, well, once well, again, so the Secretary of State. The, the, all of the right. notaries fall under the Secretary of State, and all of the secretaries okay. fall under the United States Secretary of Treasury, or excuse me, the Secretary of State, which is, you know, the former position now, because Hillary Clinton is getting ready to leave that post. But all of the secretaries of, um, of state fall under her guideline, and whoever else is getting ready to come in, um, they had a problem with rice moving into that position, and she pulled out. And so they got, um, I think they got John Kerry, in which they, they're trying to make Secretary of um, State now. But what it does is verify the, authentic, um, the authenticity of the notary. So like I said, each notary within the state actually come, are actually deputies, all right, of the Secretary of State. And each Secretary of State is a deputy of the United States Secretary of State. So let me just say it like that for for you know for simplicity. Well, wow, okay, I got I got peace. All right, brother. Got, thanks. Peace. 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 All right, we got area code 336. Area code 336. You on the line? Hey, yeah, what's going on, brother Lane? How you doing? Peace. How? How's going on, brother Hill? Yeah, and, uh, I was in the in the chat room and, and my queen she she's in school and everything, but she wanted to know it. I, I had told her, but she wanted to know about um, her reclaiming uh, her birthright and everything for me and her and our kids. And she just wanted to know about her, still about her going to college and and working. She was trying right. to figure out how would that be. Right. Once again, we made a distinction between natural person and artificial person. When you declare your nationality, you're coming back as a natural person, meaning that you now have status and a nationality and you have clan, um, um, land rights. Um, you can still utilize the artificial person. In other words, that's what have a, that's the name in which they have attached to the birth certificate. Unless you dissolve the birth certificate and unless you ask for the birth certificate back, they're still utilizing that birth certificate. So what that means is, is that you can still receive benefits or just from that birth certificate. So if you want to go to college and do those types of things and you have to work, then you do it under the, that um, straw man. But you don't have to put your indigenous appellation or your free national name into their system if you choose not to. Now, if you choose to, then you will go and um, you will get your affidavit of common law name correction, not name change because you're not going before a judge, but you will do an affidavit of common law name correction in which that you will get filed at the register of deeds or at the um, civil filing section of the clerk of courts, and they will put their seal on it and everything, and you will take that last page down to the Social Security Administration in which that you will tell them that you have changed your name. They will right. then put your name on the Social Security card. Um, of course, it will still be in all caps, you know, um, and... Um, and then you can go to the DMV in order to get a ID or a driver's license and if you choose to. This is you. And, but you will also put under there UCC 1-308 or UCC 1-103.6, which right. means you reserve all your rights without prejudice. And you would, um on there if you possibly can, and you would, or TDC, the Director of Arrest and Coercion. And you would get those particular items. But you will not mess with the birth certificate. You will not amend the birth certificate. Prophet Nobu Ali told us specifically, do not mess with the birth certificate because you will, rec cause, um, you will uh, receive um, compensation in the form of reparations from that, um, from that name. You know, in other words, from that slave name. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so that's how you would do it if that's, you know, what you would choose to do. I would just recommend you go back and listen to what I'm saying on, the, um, on here on the show in order to make sure that you understand and understand and understand everything that I'm telling you. Or give me a call at 252-257-3588, and I'll go into more detail. I right, sure will. Appreciate it, bro. All right, peace. Appreciate you. Peace out. Peace, peace and love, God. All right, peace. All right, we got Eric code 309. 309, you're on the line. 309. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually supposed to be reading a chapter in my book for this college course I got, but it's hard not to listen in on the, the real knowledge for that artificial shit. So, All but right. uh, I got two the two quick questions. Um, I'm in the process of getting nationalized and whatnot, mm -hmm. and uh, I got a court oh, I got a court date court date coming up though, and uh, I was want to know how to respond to um when they call when they call my name out, and I know it's that straw man name. I want to know how to respond to that. And so, yeah, well, it's real simple. 
Um, do you have an indigenous name or a free national name that was said you chosen for yourself with El Bay Day Al Ali with, um, on the end? Uh, no, not, uh, at the moment I do not. So you need one. You need to come okay. up with a name yes, that was said you feel comfortable with and wish that um, give you a good vibration or frequency and wish mm-hmm. that um, you've done your study through numerology and wish that you find a actual good meaning for. Because most times we have names in which that we don't even know the meaning for. And mm-hmm. um, so which that has no real meaning whatsoever. You know, so if you get a name which that has meaning, then you can say that you are um that you are um Mustafa um Alameen Bay authorized okay. representative for Bobby Morgan. Okay. And uh what would I need like a card or a, a nationality card to Yeah, you show need the your nationality that. documents. You would need your affidavit. Before you go to court you would send a notice of restricted appearance. Okay. They notice a restricted appearance. They use right. special appearance, but they have generalized special appearance with general appearance now, so it is not too much difference. But you need a notice of restricted appearance, which that you're stating specifically that you're there in court under threat of arrest or coercion. Right. And that's the only reason why you come into court, is because if you don't, they'll send out a sheriff in order to arrest you. Right. Once they right. say that okay. you dishonored the bond or, or, you know, violated that statute, so therefore mm-hmm. they say that you have. Um, that now they have to send an officer after you, so, you know, a sheriff after you. So, you know, he'll stand in court saying, you know, Bailey will stand in court saying, here he, 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 Bobby mm-hmm. Morgan did not come to court on such and such a day and therefore forfeited his bond. He is now a warrant for a failure to appear, and now they go after your ass. Well, right. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks on that. And one more, uh, you have any advice on how to become, like, a more uh, lucid dreamer or astral traveler? Yeah, there's no doubt about that, brother. It's real simple. Um, the area in which that you want to tap to is at the medulla oblongata, at the back of the head. And one mm-hmm. of the techniques is to actually to tap on that area, the back of the head. All right? You want to okay. tap. Okay. All right? Um, mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, um, the Taoists, the Buddhists, the Shaolin monks, they all tap at that head, at the back of the head area. All right, in which that actually that's the place or the location of what is known as um record, the Akashic Records. And so okay. in twenty to thirty minutes you would feel like a weight on your chest if you just relax. You know, um if you um you know, just relax, stay still, flat on your back, you laying on your back, you know, for about twenty to thirty minutes, you know, you're staying conscious. And you feel like a weight on your chest, and you may even hear weird noises, you know. But as you now in sleep, you know, paralysis, if you open your eyes, you will begin to hallucinate or dream with your eyes open. And um, and you will not, not be able to move your body. Um, your body is now completely asleep, but you're conscious of what's going on. Right. Now um, that you are aware you are dreaming, you will shut your eyes and begin to dream instantly. And you will be fully aware that you are dreaming and can now, with some practice, control your dreams. So that's the right. science of lucid dreaming. Okay. When you lay down right before you go to sleep, about 20, 30 minutes, you just stay conscious, eyes open, you know what I'm saying, until you get into a state of paralysis and you don't want to move. And that is when you can go into your dream and take your thoughts into the dream and control them, okay? Okay, then. Cool, brother. Right. Thanks. Peace. Peace. All right. We got area code two six seven. Area code two six seven. Me on the line two six seven. Peace. Peace. Brother Lean, it's Mass Man. What's good? Brother Mass, what up? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I ain't got no question. I'm just calling the. Uh, Thank you for dropping all this science and this information, you know, helping people with different situations, waking people up. That's all I call for, just to thank you, you know what I'm saying, because you got a lot of conscious gangbanging going on and beefing and all that stuff, but you're one of the brothers that I can listen to continuously and always gain information. So I just want to, you know, shout you out, and, you know, I'm, I'm always keep continue tuning in. I also want to thank you for uh, supporting me with my music as well. So that's all I wanted to do. Yeah, because we're here to make the head nod all day. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no doubt, God. Appreciate you. Peace uh, and love. Peace, peace. And love. 
All right, we got area code 347 on the line. 347. Peace, you can hear me? Peace, we got yes, you. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, peace, more. How y'all doing? All right, more. How are you tonight? Fine, God. Uh, good, 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 man. You know, this is Brother Kyle from New York Republic giving a shout out to um, Dr. Aline Bay. Brother Kyle. Yes, sir. What you got Hello? for us? It's hey, here, it's yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, for us tonight. No, no, I'm just, you know, listening in, you know. Um, everybody could appreciate, you know, the science you're dropping. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't say it no better than the lady that called in earlier. And right. That, you know, she was definitely looking for you. You know, like Bobby Hammond says, you know, when the teacher is ready, the, um, when the student is um, ready, the teacher will appear. Right, right, right. No doubt what about I mean? it. I had, you know, when I was ready, mine's appeared. You know, Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, who's known as Prince Hutan, Tupac Bay, he appeared to me in 1995. And then in 2005, another teacher appeared to me um, after the death of Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, known as Prince Hutan, Tupac Bay, um, Sonyata, Grandmaster Sonyata Saraswati. So, you know, every time um, that happened, you know, um, it was always like 10 years interval in between uh, when that took place and when that manifested. So that's a beautiful thing. Wow, right, right. Anyway, I'm not gonna hold I'm not gonna hold y'all up. Um I know there's other callers, you know, peace to you and the Empress and the fam. All right. All right, peace, boy. Peace. Peace, peace and love. Yeah, peace to that grand sheik, peace. All peace and right. love, God. Peace, God. Peace. All right, we got area code three zero five, area code three zero five on the line. Peace. Peace. Three zero five, you on the line, peace. Peace. All right, we're gonna go to area code two one three. Area code two one three, you on the line. Hey, what's up, fam? Peace, fam. Uh, peace, God. All right, all right, let's see. Okay, check it. This uh all right, night before last, night before last, I uh, um I was um uh, I was trying to go to sleep. And while I was while I was trying to go to sleep, I was still conscious. You know, I wasn't in the dream state, but I was having these type of like like visions that was like spooking me, like making my heart like race. You know what I'm saying? Different little things going on, right? And um, uh, after I passed that that, I went on to my dream world, and my dreams was like waking me up, scaring me. And then one woke me up. You know, it was a lot of them. One woke me up, and I really couldn't even go back to sleep. And I, I be I've been waking up like. Late anyway, but this particular morning I woke up early as heck, like six o'clock, <laughs> and couldn't go back to sleep. So about about eleven, uh, sometime during that, sometime probably early early morning, you know, my grandma passed. I had got a call. My little brother called me, said my grandma passed on the east coast. I'm on the west coast, you know. So you I'm know, uh, that, boy. yeah, it, you know, you know, it's a reincarnation. <laughs> you know what I mean, I ain't even tripping. Um, <clears throat> But my numbers be like, whenever I look at a clock or something, it be like 4-3. My grandma passed at 11-43 on the uh, West Coast time, you know, so, I mean, on the East Coast time. So that was kind of deep to me, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know. I know you be into them dreams and stuff, and st- different stuff like that, so I wanted to see what you got for me for that. Yeah, brother, I'm a renaissance man. I'm into everything because um, this whole thing is called life. And um, if you can't, and you can only explain one facet, then, shit, what's the point of living? But um, anyway. Um, get into the science of dreams is real simple. Um, of course, the fear that you were feeling was, of course, the passing of your grandmother. And, of course, that's the reason why you was feeling the way you was, because, you know, um, there were some impending things in which that was taking place psychically. Um, you know, if you really relax, you know what I'm saying, you can actually get in contact with her. I've got in contact with several members of my family who have passed on. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, no, that's, that's not no issue. You know, uh, matter of fact, um, my Uncle Raymond, right after he passed, he came to me and um, told me to read Psalms 13, Psalms 16. Um, Psalms 13 means to basically um, to bypass um, death and prolong life, all right? No more than a few days later, I almost choked, you know what I'm saying, to death. You know what I'm saying? So, you know... So I'm still here. So that's what he came in order to tell me in the dream 
you know what I'm saying, was to get on my spiritual work, you know, in order to bypass, you know, what was get, you know, what was getting ready to take place. And it and that's what happened. So if you relax, you know, and you know, open yourself come to you. Word, word. Word. And and um uh, do it do be anything with those numbers 'cause like for the last I say probably about the last eight, nine, maybe a year, um, I've been paying attention to the clocks. It'll be some forty three and some thirty thirty four. Anytime I look at a clock, you know. Right. You know, and uh so with thirty three and thirty four, of course, you know, that's six and seven. Thirty four formalizes um equality mm-hmm. and you know, within um, the science of the nation of gods and earths, you know, um, when you get into um, the supreme wisdom. Okay, so, mathematics. All right. Well, hey, appreciate that. Appreciate the info, fam. All right. No doubt, brother. All right. Peace. Thank you. Peace. All right. Um, that was all the for right now. So what we'll we getting ready to do is shut it on down. Appreciate you, brother L, Professor L, for coming on with us tonight. Uh, no problem at all. Anytime, God. Oh, no doubt. Appreciate you quite a bit. So what we'll be getting ready to do is head on out. First of all, all the radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>